All right, here we go. So this is how you make a tier limits player quit. So look at the hand that I got right here, right? Medora plus Kelbeck. Anytime I get a hand with these two cards, I'm pretty much going to activate this Medora to send the Kelbeck, or even if it's a Guido, Medora send the Aguido or the Kelbeck. It's going to start mailing, and if I hit Exchange of Spirit, and I'm playing against a tier limit player, it's a pretty, it's pretty much a GG's. Like it, it, it doesn't matter. They can't beat that shit. So that's automatic win right there. So let's see if they're playing tier limits. Activate the Pearl Reno right here. Grab the Rhino Heart. Activate the Medora to summon out, and I set the Gravekeeper's Trap face up, and then I go ahead and activate the. So let me explain why I did this, right? Kelbeck right here, right? This starts milling five. Gravekeeper's Trap sends the Havness right here. Right? And then I mill more. So then I activate Merly right here to start milling even more. So, yeah. Then I activate the Keldo. Now, here's the funniest thing. This card right here. While Exchange of Spirit is in your graveyard, your opponents cannot activate the effects of cards in the graveyard or special summon monsters from the graveyard, right? Now, Exchange of Spirits right there, which means his graveyard is turned off. But I am going to troll even further than this shit. I'm going to troll even further. I activate my Keldo. And shuffle all his shit back into the deck. Then he changes, or chains, I mean, he chains his Kelbeck just to summon. Now, sure, you can return one special summon card back to my hand. That's fine with me. Then I'm going to chain my Maxi to that, my boy. His graveyard was already turned off, so he had already lost the match. To then go and summon your Kelbeck. Yeah, that's tough, my boy. And then get Max Seed on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Plus, you know I got Rhino Heart in my hand. He knows that I have Kelbeck and Rhino Heart because I searched the Rhino Heart and I haven't played it yet. Then also, I searched the Kelbeck and I haven't played it yet. So he knows the two cards in my hand if he's been paying attention. That part does not matter anyways. I still had not normal summoned yet. Gravekeeper's Trap is face up on the field, which means all the cards that gets milled to his graveyard are basically getting milled for nothing. They have no effects. And then on top of that, I put them back into his deck. They're already dead cards, but I'll put them back into your deck just to give them even less value. Then if you start trying to mill on my turn, won't matter, my boy. They're not going to do nothing. So... GG is my boy. Hold that L forever. You know, you feel me? Hold that L forever. You ain't beating me, my boy. And the reason why, the whole, the whole point of me shuffling the cards back into his deck, in case y'all are wondering, why would you shuffle them back into the deck? Well, the reason why is because if he has the field spell, and he puts the field spell, and then he has a shuffler in hand, and he normals that shuffler, if he still has tier limits monsters in his graveyard and he shuffles them back into his deck, he can then activate his field spell and pop my Grave Creeper Strap. That's why I did that. So, just in case y'all were wondering. Big Brain Play is on my side. I probably would have beat him to it anyways by popping his field spell first. But just to keep that from from any coincidences from happening i just go ahead and shuffle that shit back so yeah that's how you absolutely make a whatever his name is surrender by just simply cooking the shit out of him with that gravekeeper's trap hold that deal forever my boy